Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XLM. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today, wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XLM. It's the weekend. I like to change things up a little bit. We're going to talk about some announcements around XLM. We're going to talk about that stellar IBM partnership, how it all began, and I know it's still alive and well today. We're also going to talk about XLM versus XRP. So Soroban reaches huge milestones and attracts several developers. Soroban is a smart contract platform for the Stellar Network. Built last year for developers, according to reports, the team is actively working to prepare it for the mainnet launch and also provide funding opportunities for developers while bootstrapping in the ecosystem. Even before the full implementation, there has been a lot of excitement from the community as the platform records a higher level of engagement with an increasing number of pioneers building on it. That's what you want. When you invest in a cryptocurrency, you want to network to always be expanding and growing. You want more growth to happen. It brings more investors in at the same time while it rises the value of the token. Now we're going to talk about IBM and Stellar. It started all the way back in 2017. IBM and Stellar announced a partnership to use Stellar Network for cross-border payments. IBM launched WorldWire, a platform that enables financial institutions to clear and settle transactions in seconds using Stellar's native currency, XLM. In 2018, IBM and Stellar expanded their partnership to include six international banks that agreed to issue their own stablecoins on Stellar's network. Stablecoins are digital tokens that are pegged to a fiat currency or an asset such as the US dollar or gold. Now back then in 2018, most of what we talk about around XLM was all conspiracy theory. You know, you mentioned central bank digital currencies and people were like, CBDCs are never going to happen. What is that, 20 years away? But here we are now in 2023 and you see them popping up in every single country. And everyone will utilize XLM at some point. The person-to-person -person payments, person-to-government payments, person-to-bill payments. The list goes on and on. And it's a lot of money. In 2019, IBM and Stellar launched the first public blockchain-powered bank network in Africa. The network connects 12 banks across seven countries and enables them to offer low-cost remittance services to their customers. In 2020, IBM and Stellar collaborated with the digital asset custody company DACC to provide secure custody solutions for XLM and other digital assets. DACC is a regulated custodian that offers institutional grade security and compliance for digital assets. In 2021, IBM and Stellar announced a new initiative called Vera Ledger which aims to create a transparent and trusted ledger for carbon credits. Vera Ledger leverages Stellar's network to track and verify carbon emissions and carbon credits across industries and regions. IBM and Stellar have a long history of working together to create innovative solutions for the global financial system. Once that new financial system rolls out, you're going to see IBM and Stellar connected together, utilizing XLM along the way. Armenotech, a Stellar partner, will actively participate in three central bank digital currency projects around the world, two of which will be in Europe, bringing the total number of CBDCs on the Stellar network to six. What's going on right now is Stellar is out there laying all the groundwork. Later, XLM will flow through all that network. That's when the cryptocurrency is going to take off in price. It's going to be sitting at a much higher value once that happens. Battle for the Federal Reserve. Ripple's XRP versus Stellar's XLM. Who will power the instant payment service? Honestly, I don't care about Fed now. 
I think the initial rollout is going to be a massive failure. And now they're talking about using Metal Blockchain. And everybody's talking about this like it's the XLM killer, the XRP killer. It's not. At some point, FedNow will implement XRP and XLM. Wait and see. It's just a matter of time. Now let's talk about Stellar and XLM and Stellar and Ripple. Stellar and Ripple are two of the most popular blockchain projects that aim to provide fast and low-cost cross-border payments. But how are they different and which one is better? McCaleb, who was also one of the co-founders of Ripple, he left Ripple due to disagreements over the vision and direction of the project. Stellar is a nonprofit organization that focuses on serving the underbanked population and enabling financial inclusion. You can actually see that being used right now in the real world, banking the unbanked. Ripple was founded in 2012 by Chris Larson and David Schwartz, with McCaleb joining later. Ripple is a private company that focuses on providing a global payment solution for banks and other financial institutions. Ripple aims to replace the outdated SWIFT system and compete with other payment networks like Visa and MasterCard. Both Stellar and Ripple use their native cryptocurrencies XLM and XRP to facilitate transactions on their networks. However, they have different supply and distribution models. XLM has a max supply of 50 billion coins with a 1% yearly inflation rate. XRP has a fixed supply of 100 billion coins with 52 billion in circulation and 48 billion locked in escrow. Now, since there's less XLM, you would think in the future the price of XLM should surpass XRP. But anybody in the space will tell you, no, XRP is always going to be the king of crypto. But if XRP is going to hit 10K, let's say, like most people say, I still feel XLM is going to be up there with it because there's a lot of money that flows from person to person and beyond. You know, it's not always about, you know, bank to bank payments. It goes far beyond that. There's going to be so many payments happening inside that new financial system. It's going to be shocking to most people. Both Stellar and Ripple avoid mining and high energy consumption by using different consensus mechanisms. Stellar uses the Stellar Consensus Protocol, which relies on a network of trusted nodes to validate transactions. Ripple uses the XRP Ledger Consensus Protocol, which uses a network of validators that are chosen by, the P by Ripple Labs. Both Stellar and Ripple offer fast and cheap transactions with an average speed of three to five seconds and a fee of less than a cent. However, they have different target markets and use cases. Stellar is more open and decentralized, allowing anyone to build financial products on top of it. Ripple is more closed and centralized, catering to the needs of banks and institutions. Both Stellar and Ripple have partnered with leading players in the financial industry, such as IBM, MoneyGram, American Express, and etc. However, they also face some challenges and controversies. Stellar has been criticized for its low adoption and usage, while Ripple has been sued by the SEC for allegedly selling unregistered securities. In conclusion, Stellar and Ripple are too similar but distinct blockchain projects that offer different solutions for cross-border payments. So they're never fighting each other. They're working together, which I always try to point out on this channel because you still have people that hold XLM that will never hold XRP and vice versa. I always tell you to diversify. You know, if you want to see all the money, think about it like this. You need to hold three X coins, XRP, XLM, XDC. This way you're handling the three cryptocurrencies that handle the bank-to-bank -bank payments, person-to-person -person payments, and all the world trade payments, all at the same time. But anybody that you ever talk to in the XRP community or the XLM community, there's always a handful that think these two are working against each other. Ukraine's future lies in the Great Reset. 
Ukrainian officials hope to launch Ukraine CBDC, the e Hervinia, in 2024, despite the war. And I think that the Ukraine is more on track with the Great Reset because it's like at the heart of the Great Reset. And even the U.S. is over there trying out digital ID technology at the same time. But I still feel that without CBDCs, XLM is definitely still going to rise in value year over year. Right now, we're at a point where everybody should be stacking because these prices are not going to stick around forever. XLM is a well-rounded cryptocurrency, even beyond payments. A lot of people miss that when they talk about it. Back the new owner of a crypto custody and clearing provider that helps fintech companies like Webull offer crypto trading is removing support for 25 of the 36 tokens it offers. XLM will be delisted due to regulatory pressure from the SEC. And they're not the only one. This is another delisting of XLM. Any exchange associated with the Apex Crypto will delist XLM and others. The SRC is tell SEC is telling them, if you want to stay open, to get then get rid of these cryptos. You know, the SEC didn't come after XLM directly. Didn't come after Stellar and say that XLM is a security. Instead, they're going to the exchanges and saying, listen, you have to delist certain cryptocurrencies. It also plays into the narrative, though, that we were never supposed to hold XLM to begin with. That it was somehow, you know, retail investors should not be getting rich off of this cryptocurrencies. It's too big. Look at the IMF, the way it talks about XLM. Look at the EU, the European Central Bank, and Christine Lagarde. She's mentioned XLM in the past. The BIS. These are cryptocurrencies that most people that hold them don't know exactly what they're holding. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. You need to continue holding XLM. It will give you financial freedom in the future. I'm very critical on Stellar right now, only because they talk more about USDC than they do about XLM. But, it, you know, I put that in the back of my mind. Because I know in the future, XLM is going to be utilized on a daily basis inside that new financial system. And at that point, anybody who didn't invest in this cryptocurrency currency is definitely going to regret it. But with that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you watching my videos. Sorry I messed up in this one a little bit. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.